17-year-old Raquel Dawson, who waded into the floodwaters to help a stranded motorist who got swept away. She ended up getting swept away herself and clinging to a tree for dear life as the first rescue boat sent to her capsized. As we said, we'll talk to Raquel and two of her rescuers who finally saved her in just a moment. But first, here's a look at the terrifying ordeal. I see her. A news chopper covering the flood spots a terrible sight, a 17-year-old girl hanging onto a tree near a street sign amid six feet of water. She's still hanging on, guys. All they can do is watch from the air as she desperately tries to swim against the swift current. Deadly situation here. They need to get over here quick. She loses her grip and struggles not to be swept downstream. For a moment, it looks as if she's getting pulled under. Hang on. Just hang on there. Don't move. She manages to reach a tree and hoists herself above the water and hangs on for dear life to a great rescue. As a thunder and lightning team rolls in, a rescue team is deployed to save her in a dinghy, but then the operation takes a turn for the worse. The boat overturned, so now we got about four victims out there in the water. A second team heads out. Rescuers quickly throw out a line and one by one carry victims into the boat. She's pretty calm. For being 17 years old, she was really calm. But the drama is still not over. That boat has trouble navigating the current. They're in trouble with that boat. Finally, the six rescuers and the teenager find a clear path to dry land, where the girl walks off into an awaiting helicopter. Looks like she's fine. She's walking and everything. Uh, great ending. Great ending indeed. We're joined live from Oklahoma City now by Raquel Dawson, Lieutenant Mark Edwards, and Corporal Josh Piercy of the Oklahoma City Fire Department. Good morning to you all and welcome. And Raquel, I'd like to start with you, if I may. How are you feeling this morning? I'm sore. <laughs> like incredibly sore right now. Hanging onto uh, trees that long and in waters that swift, I can only imagine the physical exertion that took. Tell me how you ended up in those flood waters. Well, at first, it was just an attempt to walk to work, but after a while, I was going to give up, but then I saw the lady hanging onto a car, and my first instinct was to go help her, so I went in deeper. <laughs> How quickly did you realize you were in over your head, no, no, no pun intended? I, I was able to get to the lady, and I was able to get her to the trees, and I left my bag with her. And then I kept swimming to try to go find help. And once I got to concrete, it was just like an island of concrete. Raquel, and what was it like that, to be? I, what was it like to be in those waters? Were they cold? How strong was the current? They were cold, and the current was really strong. I mean, there were logs like running into me, and it was. The current was strong. <laughs> we see you clinging to trees several times, almost going under. How hard was it to hang on to those branches? It was difficult. I mean, a bunch of the branches kept breaking as I'd grab onto them, and I'd have to go quick grab for another one before I drifted away. Did you begin to wonder if rescue was ever going to come? I knew they would eventually. I just didn't know how long it'd take. What was going through your head during all that time? I was, I was kind of, I kind of felt stupid for leaving the lady. I mean, I should have just stayed with her. Well, it was an honest mistake, I'm sure. Corporal Piercy, I want to ask you, how treacherous were those waters? Oh, that's a very dangerous situation. Uh, those waters were very swift and uh, very violent as they came through those trees, uh, as that river was out of its banks. And you had heard that a first boat had been sent out to get Raquel. What had you been told about what happened to that boat? Uh, we knew that an airboat had went out and uh, tried to get her with a couple of firefighters and a boat operator and that they had capsized and that they were in the trees near where she was, but we didn't exactly know where everyone was uh, when we started the search. Raquel, what happened when that first boat got to you? How did they all end up uh, in the water themselves? The current was going against the fan and it made the end of the boat go down because of the current. And at, and that, point, sunk. at that point, did it get really scary for you? Yeah. <laughs> sort of. I didn't know how much longer we were going to be in the water. 
So the second radios. The second boat arrives. Lieutenant Edwards, can you tell me how difficult it was to maneuver in those conditions in that second boat? It was very difficult, and it's very difficult to find her, as you can tell from the video footage and everything, that it was densely populated, a lot of trees, and uh, <clears throat> pardon me, it's a concerted effort with uh, the aerial support, our uh, OHP, and also the news media, and uh, the police department up there, and they actually pinpoint the victims. So uh, where our job was, our task was, was actually to follow the helicopters, get in the area, and then holler for them and uh, eventually find them. So uh, it was treacherous, and we had some boat difficulties as well, some engine difficulties, but uh, the Zodiac Rescue Boat is uh, ideal for that situation. We're all able to get up there to the trees and uh, extricate them from the trees onto the boat and then find our way to, to shore. So and Corporal, we just, saw, good day. we just saw a video a second ago of that Zodiac boat bumping into a tree as you're trying to get to safety. You're overloaded. Were you concerned that this second boat would also capsize? That's always a concern. Um, as soon as you put more people in the boat, you know, we look for the closest, safest area to get people out of the boat. That's why we went for the little landing with the helicopter. Um, we, we hit lots of trees yesterday. Um, had many rescues in the Zodiac, and that is, with that violent of water, that's just one of the things that are going to happen a lot. And finally, Corporal, it might seem like the right thing to get out of your car in floodwaters like this, but you actually don't advise it. No, we, we traditionally tell people to try and stay in your car. Um, just We call it shelter in place. Uh, if you have to, if the water just keeps coming up, you know, a lot of people get on their hoods or on the trunk, you know, on the top of their car. And, you know, we, we really advise to stay there, you know, call for help, signal someone, we'll come and get you. Uh, the water is much stronger than it appears and is very hard to swim in. All right, Raquel, we're so glad you're, you're a little bit sore but okay today. Do you regret it all going in to try and help that stranded motorist yesterday? I do, but at the same time, I don't regret it because, okay. yeah. It was the right thing to do, but probably not the way you intended everything to turn out. Okay, Raquel Dawson, Corporal Lieutenant, thank you so much for being here with us. Job well done, guys, and in rescuing not only Raquel, but your fellow uh, rescuers. And as you just heard, if you find yourself caught in a sudden flash flood, there are some things to keep in mind first. If you're in a car, never drive into a flood. That's because as little as six inches of water can cause you to lose control. Two feet of rushing water can actually carry away most vehicles, even trucks and SUVs. Second, if you find your car surrounded by floodwaters and you need to get out, try and go to higher ground or to the roof of the car. And if you, like our guest, find yourself stranded in a tree or on top of a building, do not enter the floodwaters. Just six inches of moving water is enough to knock you down. So stay put and wait for rescuers. For more tips on how you can protect, protect yourself if you're ever trapped in a flash flood, you can go to abcnews.com GMA.